Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Varsa Williams and with me is Renuka Aris with the evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says unprecedented capital outlay allocation in budget shows government's commitment to provide better health care to every citizen. IITs have to be taken to next level as per changing aspirations of 21st century India, says Prime Minister. President Ramnath Kovind attends third convocation ceremony of Central University of Gujarat. Defence Acquisition Council approves capital acquisition proposals worth over 13,700 crore rupees. External Affairs Minister S. Shankar says, Terrorism continues to be one of the gravest threats to humankind, terms it a crime against humanity. India and Mauritius sign Comprehensive Economic Cooperation and Partnership Agreement. More than 1 crore 19 lakh COVID vaccine doses administered in the country so far. Telangana government decides to reopen schools for classes 6, 7 and 8 from tomorrow after COVID lockdown. BJP all set to retain power in all six major municipal corporations in Gujarat. And in cricket, third test between India and England to begin in Ahmedabad tomorrow. As the nation fights the COVID-19 pandemic, we begin with a message of precaution to stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain dogas ki duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said the government has created a robust health infrastructure in a short span of time during the COVID-19 situation. He said an extensive network of testing labs has been created with the coordinated efforts of the government and the private sector, which helps in dealing effectively with the coronavirus disease. He was speaking at a webinar today on working towards a vibrant health sector. कुछ महीनों के भीतर ही जिस तरह देश ने करीब ढाई हजार लैब्स का नेटवर्क खड़ा किया, कुछ दर्जन टेस्ट से हम आज करीब 21 करोड़ टेस्ट के पड़ाव तक पहुंच पाए। ये सब सरकार और प्राइवेट सेक्टर के साथ मिलकर काम करने से ही संभव हुआ है। Appreciating India's efforts during the COVID-19 pandemic, Mr. Modi said the world has noted the strength which the country's health sector has shown during the coronavirus pandemic. He said reputation and confidence in India's health care system has reached a new level in the world. The Prime Minister said unprecedented capital outlay has been allocated in the union budget for the health sector and this shows the commitment of the government to provide better health care to every countryman. He said strengthening of health infrastructure is necessary to deal effectively with COVID-19 like health disasters in the future. Corona ne hume ye sabak diya hai ke hume sirf aaj hi mahamari se nahi ladna hai balki bhavish mein aane wali aisi kisi bhi sthiti ke liye bhi desh ko tayyar karna hai. Is liye health sector se jude har kshetra ko majboot karna bhi utna hi avashak hai. मेडिकल इक्विपमेंट से लेकर मेडिसिन्स तक वेंटिलेटर से लेकर वैक्सीन्स तक साइंटिफिक रिसर्च से लेकर के सर्वेलेंस इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर तक डॉक्टर से लेकर के एपिडेमियोलॉजिस्ट तक हमें सभी पर ध्यान देना है Mr. Modi said the government sees health issues in a holistic way and an integrated approach has been taken through increased investment in the health sector to provide health care facilities in far-flung areas of the country. He added that 70,000 crore rupees will be spent on the health care sector, which will improve health facilities and create more employment. Talking about the PM Atmanirbhar Swast Bharat Yojana, Mr. Modi said it will create a robust health ecosystem in the country by focusing on research, testing and treatment. The Prime Minister said India is working together on four fronts to keep people healthy. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that the requirements and aspirations of 21st century India have changed and now the IITs have to be taken to the next level as Institute of Indigenous Technology. 
addressing the 66th annual convocation of IIT Kharagpur through video conferencing today, the Prime Minister said, students who have got degrees today will not only have to start a new life but also act as a start-up to change the lives of thousands of people of this country. इस संस्थान से देश को 21वीं सदी के आत्मनिर्भर भारत में बन रहे नए इकोसिस्टम के लिए नई लीडरशिप की भी उम्मीद है नया इकोसिस्टम हमारे स्टार्टअप्स की दुनिया में नया इकोसिस्टम हमारे इनोवेशन रिसर्च की दुनिया में नया इकोसिस्टम हमारे कॉरपोरेट वर्ल्ड में और नया इकोसिस्टम देश की प्रशासनिक व्यवस्था में इस कैंपस से निकल कर आपको सिर्फ अपना नया जीवन ही स्टार्ट नहीं करना है बल्कि आपको देश के करोड़ों लोगों के जीवन में बदलाव लाने वाले स्वयं में एक स्टार्टअप भी बनना है द मेडल्स एंड अवार्ड गिवन टू द पास आउट आर द चार्ट ऑफ डिमांड ऑफ द पीपल ऑफ दिस कंट्री विच दे हैव टू फुलफिल He said, "Today is a significant day for building new India, as the students who passed out from the prestigious institute are the representatives of the aspiration of 130 crore Indians." Mr. Modi said that engineers have the ability to take things from patent to patent. He said, "Self-awareness, self-confidence, and selflessness will be the key to success in life." There is no shortcut in the way of science, technology, and innovation. Even if someone does not succeed, they will learn something new. As failure is the pillar of success. Today, our aspas information ka jo bhandar hai, usme se problems aur unke patterns usko aap bahut bari ki se dekh paate. Har problem ke saath pattern jude hote hain. Samasyaon ke patterns ki samajh hume unke long term solution ki taraf le jaati hai. ये समझ भविष्य में नई डिस्कवरीज नए ब्रेक थ्रूज उसका एक आधार बनती है आप सोचिए आप कितने जीवन में बदलाव ला सकते हैं कितने जीवन बचा सकते हैं देश के संसाधनों को बचा सकते हैं अगर आप पैटर्न को समझे और उसे समझकर समाधान निकाले Keeping in view the safety measures during the post pandemic situation this year the convocation is being organized in a virtual mode Union Minister of Education Ramesh Pokhriyal Nishank and Minister of State Sanjay Dhotre also addressed the convocation 75 students including 9 institute gold medal winners and 66 institute silver medal winners were awarded in person while more than 2800 students were awarded degrees in online mode President Ram Nath Govind has said that the people of Gujarat have established their unique identity by their global vision and entrepreneurship. Addressing the third convocation ceremony of Central University of Gujarat at Gandhinagar this evening, he said that the students of other states studying in Gujarat should learn and adopt the culture of self-employment and entrepreneurship from the people of Gujarat. Mr. Govind said all students should take the oath to make India the best country in the world by the year 2047. शिक्षण संस्थानों द्वारा यह प्रयास किया जाना है कि हमारे विद्यार्थी आधुनिक विश्व समुदाय के समर्थ नागरिक बने उच्च शिक्षण संस्थानों द्वारा लोक हित और नैतिकता के महत्व पर भी विशेष बल दिए जाने की आवश्यकता है मानवीय संवेदनाओं व नैतिकता पर आधारित भारतीय जीवन मूल्यों पर विशेष बल देकर ही हम अपने विश्वविद्यालयों तथा पाश्चात्य विचारों पर आधारित विदेशी विश्वविद्यालयों वह शिक्षण संस्थानों के बीच में अंतर कर सकेंगे The Defence Acquisition Council DAC today approved capital acquisition proposals of various weapons platforms equipment and systems required by the Indian Army Indian Navy and the Indian Air Force Three acceptance of necessities AONs for an overall cost of 13700 crore rupees were accorded All these AONs are in the highest priority category of defense acquisition by Indian IDDM indigenously designed developed and manufactured these acquisitions will include platforms and systems designed and developed by defense research and development organization DRDO 
External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar has said that human rights agenda continues to face severe challenges, most of all from terrorism. In his statement at the high-level segment of the 46th session of UN Human Rights Council, Dr. Jay Shankar said terrorism continues to be one of the gravest threats to humankind. It is a crime against humanity and violates the most fundamental human right, the right to life. Terrorism continues to be one of the gravest threats to humankind. It is a crime against humanity and violates the most fundamental human right, namely the right to life. As a long-standing victim, India has been in the forefront of the global action against terrorism. This is possible only when there is a clear realization, including in bodies dealing with human rights, that terrorism can never be justified, nor its perpetrators ever equated with its victims. India and Mauritius have signed the Comprehensive Economic Cooperation and Partnership Agreement. This is the first trade agreement signed by India with a country in Africa. The agreement is a limited agreement which will cover trade in goods, rules of origin, trade in services, technical barriers to trade, sanitary and phytosanitary measures, dispute settlement, movement of natural persons, telecom, financial services, customs procedures and cooperation in other areas. You are listening to the evening news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says unprecedented capital outlay allocation in budget shows government's commitment to provide better health care to every citizen. IITs have to be taken to next level as per changing aspirations of 21st century India, says Prime Minister. President Ramnath Govind attends third convocation ceremony of Central University of Gujarat. Defence Acquisition Council approves capital acquisition proposal worth over 13,700 crore rupees. External Affairs Minister S. Jayashankar says terrorism continues to be one of the greatest threats to humankind, terms it a crime against humanity. India and Mauritius find comprehensive economic cooperation and partnership agreement. More than 1 crore 19 lakh COVID vaccine doses administered in the country so far. Telangana government decides to reopen schools for classes 6, 7 and 8 from tomorrow after COVID lockdown. BJP all set to retain power in all six major municipal corporations in Gujarat. And in cricket, third test between India and England to begin in Ahmedabad tomorrow. For quick news update around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. <laughs> Welcome back to the evening news. The Union Health Ministry today said more than 1 crore 19 lakh COVID-19 vaccine doses have been administered to beneficiaries so far. These include 64 lakh 71,047 healthcare workers who have taken the first dose and 13 lakh 21,635 healthcare workers who have taken the second dose. Briefing Media New Delhi Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan said there are 12 states and union territories in which the first dose has been administered to more than 75% of the registered healthcare workers. He said two states, Maharashtra and Kerala, account for 75% of total active cases in the country. The Health Secretary said the central government will soon start administering COVID-19 vaccine to the third category of prioritized group, comprising people who are above 50 years of age. He said the government will use the services of private hospitals in large numbers to expedite the pace of the vaccination drive. Member Health in Niti Aayog, Dr. V.K. Paul said 187 individuals have been detected with the UK strain, six people with the South African strain and one with the Brazilian strain till date. We are constantly watching the behavior of mutations in our country, not just the three famous ones, 
but also some that were picked up very much in India and others potentially. Because when you do sequencing, you can look at any mutation, mutation of interest as well as unforeseen mutation. But you attribute its effect only when you relate it to transmissibility or excess mortality or any unusual behavior. Today, based on the information and as analyzed and understood by a very, very eminent scientific advisory group of INSOCOG, we would like to state and underline the fact that we do not see attribution of mutant strains to the upsurge of the infection that you have seen in some of the districts. In Telangana, the state government has decided to reopen schools for classes 6, 7 and 8 from tomorrow after the COVID lockdown. Education Minister Sabita Indra Reddy informed that the decision was taken following instructions from Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao. The schools will have to ensure strict compliance of COVID-19 guidelines and consent of the parents is mandatory for the students to attend classes. State Chief Secretary Somesh Kumar directed the district collectors to reopen schools for class 6 to 8 tomorrow to the maximum extent possible and if not, latest by the 1st of March. He held a review meeting in this regard in Hyderabad today. About 17.24 lakh students will be studying in these classes in the state. In Jharkhand, the State Disaster Management Department issued a detailed Standard Operating Procedures SOPs today for schools which will open from 1st of March onwards for Class 8th, 9th and 11th to avert the spread of COVID-19 during offline teaching. As per the new unlock guidelines, the state government has instructed to ensure health, hygiene and safety of students who will be attending offline classes from 1st of March. The state government has issued a detailed advisory for serving midday meals in schools and SOPs for learning with physical and social distancing. A special checklist for safe school environment, roles and responsibilities of stakeholders and capacity building has also been released for the schools. The COVID-19 cluster outbreak in Bengaluru has put Brahat Bengaluru Mahanagra Palike on high alert. The Municipal Corporation conducted RT-PCR tests of 501 people in the third cluster outbreak site and found 20 of them positive in Bengaluru. More from our Bengaluru correspondent. Bengaluru Urban District has reported the highest number of 40,943 positive cases till date and out of them 4,384 are active now. Apart from these 7,484 persons are in active quarantine. The district has reported 1,731 cases in the last seven days and has a recovery rate of 97.8%. It has recorded a positivity rate of 1.2% and case fatality rate of 1.1%. On an average, over 20,000 tests are conducted in the city and the figure was 23,425 yesterday. The test per million population in the last seven days was over 24,000. Sudhindra, AIR News, Bengaluru. In Maharashtra, Chief Minister Dhav Thakre today reviewed the COVID situation in a meeting with municipal commissioners of MMR region. He also asked the Washim district administration to take strict action against those who organized large gatherings at religious places today where the state forest minister offered worship. Besides this, various precautionary measures are being taken to control the rising corona cases in the state. Our Mumbai correspondent has filed this report. Night curfew is imposed in Aurangabad city from today till 14th March. School, colleges and other educational institutions will be closed till 31st March in Jalna district. But 10th and 12th school will remain open in Jalna. Daiwadi village and the surrounding area in Satara district is declared as a containment zone. Various organizations have cancelled their events scheduled in near future to avoid public gathering. But Maharashtra's education minister, Varsha Gaikwad has verified that the 10th and 12th board exam will be taken in offline mode. Jivan Bhavsar, AIR News, Mumbai. Director General of Indian Council of Medical Research Dr. Balram Bhargav today clarified that there is no direct relation between the recent surge in COVID-19 cases in Maharashtra and some other states with the mutant virus strains N440K and E484Q of COVID-19. He also clarified that these two virus strains have been detected in other countries too and are not specific to India. In the wake of the sudden surge in daily COVID cases in Madhya Pradesh and neighboring state Maharashtra, the state government has intensified surveillance in all the districts adjoining Maharashtra. More from our correspondent. 
इंदौर एंड भोपाल आर विटनेसिंग राइज इन कोविड केसेस यूज ऑफ मास्क इन बोथ द सिटीज हैव बीन मेड मैंडेटरी एंड स्ट्रिक्ट चेकिंग इज बीइंग मेड बाय एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव अथॉरिटीज डिस्ट्रिक्ट कलेक्टर्स ऑफ एडवाइनिंग स्टेट महाराष्ट्र हेल्ड मीटिंग ऑफ क्राइसिस मैनेजमेंट ग्रुप एंड स्ट्रेटेजी रिगार्डिंग नेसेसरी प्रिकॉशंस इन व्यू ऑफ द प्रिवेलिंग सर्कमस्टांसेज एट द डिस्ट्रिक्ट लेवल हैज बीन चॉक्ड आउट डिस्ट्रिक्ट कलेक्टर बालाघाट दीपक आर्य इन्फॉर्म्ड दैट नाइट कर्फ्यू हैज बीन इम्पोज फ्रॉम टेन पी एम टू सिक्स एम एंड प्रोहिबिटरी ऑर्डर्स रिगार्डिंग असेंबली ऑफ फाइव और मोर पीपल एट वन प्लेस हैज also been issued in rural areas of all the districts uh, adjoining maharashtra all government teams including the rural development department has initiated awareness campaign on prevention of corona and rokotoko abhiyan puja pivardhan aiya news bhopal the news services division of all india radio in its bilingual live phone in program tonight will bring you a special discussion on covid-19 this can be heard on fm gold channel and additional frequencies from 9:30 pm onwards Dr OP Sundrani Associate Professor Critical Care Medicine Pandit Jawahar Lal Nehru Memorial Medical College Raipur will participate in the discussion listeners can ask questions to the expert on toll free telephone number 18005767 this is all india radio giving you the news for quick news update round the clock follow us on our twitter handle at aar news alerts ग्लोबल टॉय इंडस्ट्री सात लाख करोड़ रुपये से भी अधिक की टीम अप फॉर द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया इज ऑर्गेनाइजिंग इंडिया फर्स्ट एवर द इंडिया टॉय फेयर इंडियन लोकल टॉय मैन्युफैक्चर मार्च फॉरवर्ड फॉर आत्मनिर्भर भारत इट्स टाइम टू गेट वोकल फॉर योर रिमार्केबल लोकल फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी सेवन फेब्रवरी टू सेकेंड मार्च मस्ट कम फॉरवर्ड टू गेट रजिस्टर्ड ऑनलाइन एट डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू The National Toy Fair is being held on the virtual platform from the 27th of February to the 2nd of March. It aims to boost toy manufacturing in India and improve its global market share. Our correspondent from Mumbai reports that the exhibitors feel more such virtual toy fairs should be organized in future. BJP has risen power in all the six municipal corporations according to state election commission BJP won 469 seat while Congress got 45 With just a few days remaining before the National Toy Fair begins, we have been speaking to several exhibitors from Mumbai who are participating in the first of its kind initiative of the central government. One such exhibitor is Mr. Manoj Gala of Manoj Stores, which has been in the business since 1987. It is one of the popular toy stores at Bridge Candy in Mumbai, providing 15,000 varieties under one roof. Mr. Manoj feels the idea of virtual toy fair is a very good initiative by the central government as it will not only benefit toy manufacturers and retailers but also any enable people all over the country to explore the varieties of toys that are made within the country and from where to order besides he also highlighted challenges faced by the indian toy industry let us listen to what he has to say i think the initiative to have a virtual toy fair is a very good initiative by the central government it will enable people from all over the country to see what is made in the country from where to order call for the same it will help manufacturers and retailers in sourcing however just one exhibition for 4 days is not enough and lots more needs to be done while the toy makers have welcome this initiative they also feel that the government should organize more such exhibitions or toy fairs in future sweeti jain air news mumbai in gujarat the bharatiya janata party has emerged victorious in surat vadodara rajkot bhavnagar and jamnagar municipal corporations while it is leading in ahmedabad municipal corporation for which counting of votes is underway we have more from our correspondent BJP has risen power in all the six municipal corporations according to state election commission BJP won 469 seats while Congress got 45 seats of the total 575 seats of the six municipal corporations Aam Aadmi Party which contested civic polls for the first time in the state won 27 seats in Surat Bahujan Samaj Party got 3 seats while one seat is won by an independent candidate Gujarat Chief Minister Vijay Rupani thanks voter for the trust in BJP after the party's victory in the civic polls on the the hand bjp and congress both won e one seat each of the junagadh municipal corporation for which by polls were conducted on 21st february rallies are being organized by bjp workers across all the major cities in the state to celebrate the massive victory of the party in the civic polls aparna khund ar news ahmedabad 
from minister narendra modi has thanked the people of gujarat for their support and trust in the bjp in the municipal elections in a tweet mr modi said results of municipal elections across the state clearly show the unwavering faith people have towards politics of development and good governance he said today's win across gujarat is very special the prime minister said for a party that is serving the state for over two decades to record such a phenomenal win is noteworthy he said it is heartening to see widespread support from all sections of society particularly the youth of gujarat towards the bjp home minister amit shah has said that bjp has won 85% of seat in municipal corporation election in gujarat and the state has once again become a stronghold of the party Speaking to media Mr Shah said by giving only 44 seats people have sent a message to congress leaders to do self introspection he said bjp's win on over 85% seats is a victory of bjp government functioning and its principles मोदी जी के नेतृत्व में जो विकास की यात्रा चली थी उसको भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने आज भी चालू रखा है और आज जो परिणाम आए हैं वो गुजरात में अब तक के सबसे अच्छे परिणामों में से एक परिणाम है जितनी भी सीटें भारतीय जनता पार्टी लड़ी जितनी भी सीटें हैं उसमें लगभग 85 प्रतिशत सीटें भारतीय जनता पार्टी जीती है और कांग्रेस पार्टी बुरी तरह से इस चुनाव में हारी है पूरे गुजरात में सिर्फ चौवालीस सीटें कांग्रेस को प्राप्त हुई है In cricket the third test of the four match series between India and England will be played at the world's largest Sardar Patel Stadium Mudaira in Ahmedabad from tomorrow a report The world's largest cricket stadium Sardar Patel Cricket Stadium at Mudaira in Ahmedabad is all set to make history by hosting its first day and night ping ball test match between India and England President Ramnath Kovind will inaugurate this newly built Sardar Patel Cricket Stadium on the occasion The president is expected to watch the match along with the Union Home Minister Amit Shah soon after the inauguration ceremony Sardar Patel Mudaira Stadium will be the largest cricket stadium in the world located in Sabarmati Ahmedabad The Mudaira Stadium is equipped with new decorations and latest facilities is the stadium is spread over 63 acres with a seating capacity of 110000 people currently melbourne is the largest cricket stadium in the world which can accommodate 19000 people the motera stadium houses 76 corporate boxes olympics level swimming pool indoor academy four dressing rooms for athletes and food courts with the series level at 1-1 and the world test championship slot up for grabs both the remaining tests are crucial for india india would be hoping that the formula in chennai will be equally useful under different conditions Sanjeev Jasotia news desk Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow Srinagar will witness rain or snow temperature will hover between 5 and 15 degrees celsius Jammu will have partly cloudy sky becoming generally cloudy towards afternoon or evening or night the minimum temperature will be 13 degrees celsius while maximum will be around 23 degrees Leh will have generally cloudy sky the minimum temperature will be minus 2 degrees celsius while the maximum will be around 8 degrees Gilgit will have generally cloudy sky with light rain. The temperature will hover between 3 and 19 degrees Celsius. Muzaffarabad will witness generally cloudy sky with light rain. The temperature will hover between 9 and 18 degrees Celsius. National capital Delhi is likely to have shallow fog. The temperature will hover between 12 and 31 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have mainly clear sky. The minimum temperature will be 22 degrees Celsius while maximum is expected to be around 35 degrees. Chennai is expected to have partly cloudy sky. The temperature will vary between 22 and 32 degrees Celsius. In Kolkata, there will be fog in the morning and mainly clear sky later. The city will observe minimum temperature of 20 degrees Celsius and a maximum of around 33 degrees. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says unprecedented capital outlay allocation in budget shows government's commitment to provide better health care to every citizen. IITs have to be taken to next level as per changing aspirations of 21st century India says Prime Minister. President Ramnath Kovind attends a third convocation ceremony of Central University of Gujarat. Defence Acquisition Council approves capital acquisition proposals worth over 13,700 crore rupees. External Affairs Minister S. Jayashankar says terrorism continues to be one of the gravest threats to humankind, terms it a crime against humanity. India and Mauritius sign comprehensive economic cooperation and partnership agreement. More than 1 crore 19 lakh covid vaccine doses administered in the country so far 
Telangana government decides to reopen schools for classes 6, 7 and 8 from tomorrow after covid lockdown BJP all set to retain power in all six major municipal corporations in Gujarat and in cricket third test between india and england to begin in ahmedabad tomorrow for details of these stories and more log on to our website www.newsonair.com and news on air app and with that we end the evening news good night <laughs>